John chapter 16. I don't know where to go. We've been looking at the beginning of the year, talking about our, uh, our uh, things in our life that we do to draw closer to the Lord. And I, I hope that you've had a good year. I hope that uh, you have found that uh, your time with the Lord has been sweet. I pray that the, word is, he has, the Lord has spoke to you from his word. I pray that your prayer time has been sweet and has been good and has been nourishing. I, I probably can tell that in the, the last six weeks that you probably had some really good times. You probably had some little dips in the road there too. I, I told someone between services that uh, uh, in my personal life, there are times that my prayers are on fire. And then there are times that I just have to pray through. Y'all know what I'm talking about? There's times that the, that the word just jumps off the page. And then there's times I have to read the whole page over again because I, I read it and I don't know what I'm talking about, right? Don't, don't, don't know what I just read. And those things are normal. Those things are normal. But here's what we need to remember. I said this last week. We need to ask and keep on asking, and keep on asking, and keep on asking. That's what the Word says. Seek, and keep on seeking, and keep on seeking until you find. Knock, and knock, and pound, and knock until your knuckles are, are, are red, until the door is opened, and you get to walk into the very presence of the glory of God. All of the things that God has for us are beautifully, wonderfully, gloriously put together for us. We're all going to go through different things. We're all going to go through different circumstances and trials and all those things. Same God. They're with us every step of the way. Wonderfully, gloriously put together. Now in your quiet times, all of us do it differently. Some of us start with a, a, a jump start. We'll read a devotion that someone writes and we'll read that before we get to the Word of God before we get to, to our, our prayer time. Some of us, maybe we have a song in our heart. You know, if, you, if you're just having that kind of a day, the only way you can express your love is just singing to Him. Well, that went over like a lead balloon. I didn't get a half a hallelujah out of that one. I don't know. But I, I, sometimes we're drawn to the songs that we remember when we were 8, 9, 10 years old. Is that y'all? So you may need to take a hymn book with you to your quiet time because there may be a, a chorus that you'll sing or part of a verse. And you don't remember all the words to it. You can flip it over and it just, that, that second verse will evade you. Amen? And Baptists never sing, even sing the third verse. We always just go straight to the end, right? But those things, they, whatever it is that, listen now, under the prompting of the Spirit of God, that's what you want to do in your quiet time. And you want to wake up and be gloriously drawn into his presence. Amen? I'm going to have to work on y'all this morning, I can tell. All of y'all at home, I hope you're amen to me a whole lot faster than these guys are. Listen, I want to share something with you that I think is very important this morning. Some of us look at God and we give God the Father all the props that he deserves. Amen? He is glorious. He, his name should be hallowed. And we love Jesus, right? The, the lover of our soul, the, our Savior, our Lord, our Master, our King. But us Baptists, can I talk about us? I am one, so I can talk about us. Sometimes we'll say 45% to the Father, 45% to Jesus the Son. They're equal standing, right? We may give the Holy Spirit 10%. Pretty quiet in here. Y'all know what it should be? 100% to the Father, 100% to the Son, listen now, and 100% to the Holy Spirit. I think some of us are afraid of the Holy Spirit. I mean, in the old King James, we called him a ghost. We don't like ghosts. We think it's, we, we, we're just not too sure about him whatsoever. He may do something that makes me uncomfortable. Let me tell you, you're never going to find the closeness and the preciousness of God until you get to that uncomfortable place. And let the joy of the Lord come in. We need to understand that the Holy Spirit 
is God's gift to us. We need him. We need to open our lives up to whatever he may be doing in our life. A river, that this week, <clears throat> y'all see the rivers this week? They were flowing, weren't they? I was looking, I drove by, drove by a few of them this week, and I, I looked at them, and they were just massive, and the water was just coming. But listen to me now. A river can never rise above the height of its source. If the source is not there, it'll run dry. A river can never flow higher than its source. And that source is the Holy Spirit of God. We need to listen, learn to listen to the Holy Spirit of God. In the book of 1 Samuel, chapter number 3, Samuel, the prophet, was just a young boy. and He did not know the things of God yet or the ways of God. And one night he was uh, laying there in bed, and he heard, he heard the voice say to his name, Samuel. Well, Samuel got up real quick, and he ran to his, the priest, Eli. He was the one who was leading him and guiding him. And he said, here I am. You called for me. Eli, Eli said, I didn't call for you. Go lay back down. Samuel went and laid back down. And he heard the voice again. Samuel. Samuel got up real quickly and ran to Eli and said, Here I am. You called for me. Probably a little agitated. He said, You woke me up twice. I didn't call for you. Go back. Lay down. Samuel did. And he heard the voice of God again. Samuel. Samuel jumped up and ran to Eli again the third time. But this time, Eli sensed that it may have been God who was calling. And he says, go back and lay back down. But if you hear the voice again, say this, here I am, your servant is listening. And Eli did. Probably had one eye open, don't y'all think? And he heard the voice and he called him by name, Samuel. And this time, Samuel said, here I am. Your servant is listening. And at that point in time, God began to speak to young Samuel. Now, it's unique that in that chapter, 1 Samuel 3, it said that the word of God was rare among the people. And it's rare among the people sometimes because when God speaks, and he does, do we hear? Are we listening? Do we ignore? Do we walk away from it? Do we procrastinate what it is that he was saying? But that night, God called. Samuel understood. Your servant is listening. And God spoke. And by the way, God spoke words that Samuel needed to hear. Listen, that Eli needed to hear. That Eli's two boys, Hophni and Phinehas, they needed to hear. And all of Israel be, began to hear. Listen, when God speaks, it's a great word for all. And God speaks to us. Don't be afraid of that. It's the voice of God for us. We need it. Take your Bible. Let's look in the Gospel of John, chapter number 16. Jesus is talking to his servants and he's telling them he's going to have to leave. He's telling them, I will go and I will be crucified. Could you imagine the cold chills that probably ran all over them when they thought crucified? They had seen it. The body hung on the cross, began by the Persians, perfected by the Romans, it was a death penalty that was to inflict the most punishment possible to keep you alive and pain the longest period of time that they could. He says, I'm going to have to go and I will be crucified. But I will die, but I will be resurrected. They probably didn't really know what all that meant. But now he's telling them, here this last day, and he says to them, look in verse number 5, John 16, verse number 5.
but now go away to him who sent me. And none of you ask me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Well, surely they would be sorrowful. The one that they had spent three and a half years with, <laughs> that they loved, that they respected. They had seen the power of God, the anointing. They had called him the Christ, the Messiah. He's going away. He says, but because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. To your advantage. You'll be better off if I'm not here. For if I do not go away, look at this word now, the helper will not come to you. The helper. Does anybody need help? Walking through this world of sin and shame, does anybody need help? Does anybody need comfort? Does anybody need a word from God? Does anybody, if you wanted to cry out to God, wouldn't it be so wonderful if God would speak? Well, the voice of God is the Holy Spirit. He says, I will send the helper. If I don't go away, the helper will not come. But if I depart, I will send him to you. That's a, that's a directive. And it's personal. If you trust Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and Lord, the Holy Spirit will come and abide within you. You'll be cleansed. You'll have access to the vault of the treasures of the glory of God. All the wisdom and all the truth, it'll be there for you. The helper will come. The great physician. The word of God come alive. The wisdom of the Proverbs. The meaning of of life will step within you. He says, and when he has come, he will convict the world of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment to come. But that's a sermon for a different day, but he basically says, I'll take the sin of all your yesterdays. I'll give you the help that you need to live and walk in righteousness today. And I'll be there with you when judgment comes. When the Holy Spirit comes, He'll take care of your yesterdays. He'll take care of your tomorrows, but he'll be with you in your todays. Look in verse 12. I still have many things to say to you. We could not take it all in that God has for us. All the things that we need in life, listen, and as we seek to grow, grow close to him, he calls us to himself because he loves us and he wants to have a relationship. He wants to have a conversation. He says, he said, I, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. However, when he, the spirit of truth, Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. But you get everything that is in me through the power of the Holy Spirit. So he's here to show you the way. He's here to guide you. In all truth, when you don't know, when you have question marks, you don't know what's next, the one will be there to grab a hold of you and guide you through your circumstances with truth. When you need life and you need it abundantly, when you feel like you're, you're, you're in a pit and the bottom is knocked out and you're drained dry, when you've lost your purpose, when you've lost your meaning, the one who gives meaning, the one who is meaning will be there with you. This is nothing to be afraid of. This is the joy of God for you. God's best for you right now. No matter what. No matter what you're facing. No matter what you're feeling. No matter what difficulty may be there. The answer. The Holy Spirit is there for you. He says, however, when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority. You'll never hear the Holy Spirit talk about the Holy Spirit. Now, there are many people, and this is one of the things, the reason why we don't give the Holy Spirit the props he needs is because 
He doesn't talk about himself. When the Holy Spirit comes, he's always pointing us to the Father and to Jesus Christ the Son. That's his conversation. He's always going to point us to them. So it's often easy to overlook. But what we need to know is the voice that comes, the voice of God, the voice of depth and meaning and significance is the still, small voice of the Holy Spirit. Sometimes he shouts. Amen? According to y'all, sometimes he comes with those big cowboy boots and stomps on your toes when I preach. Sometimes he's the thing that jumps off the page when you see the Word of God. Sometimes he's the one who, who has those sharp elbows that, that elbows you, you in your side when your tongue overrides your soul. Sometimes he's the one that is the great physician that just comes and calms the raging seas. Puts things back in order. Sometimes he just comes just to say, I love you. And you say, yes, Lord, I know you love me. And he says, no, but I love you. Yes, Lord, I know you love me. No, my child. He puts his arms of love around us and draws us close and says, I want you to know I love you. Nothing in all of the world matters like you do. We as children need to hear that. That we have a Father who's for us. We have a Savior alive and working for us. And we have the Spirit manifesting His presence with us. With us. All things that the Father has are mine, Jesus said. Therefore I said that He will take of mine and declare it to you. He will give it to you. I don't know how it makes you feel, but hear this very well. All that is the goodness of God is made available for you. Have you ever walked into a library and you just saw tens of thousands of books? And you said, how can I read all this? How can I know all this? But the circumstance that I have today, this volume will help me. And the Holy Spirit is that daily volume for you. And he walks with you. And he talks with you. And he tells you that you are his own. Do you hear me? The gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, what does this mean in our life? I've already said that we, he is so overlooked. That we, he's, we don't hear him. Well, if it's all right with you, take your Bible and turn over to the Gospel of Luke chapter 6. And let me see if I can help you here just a little bit. If he is the way, he will guide us through the circumstances of life. If he is the truth, then he'll tell us what we need to hear as we face those circumstances of today. And if he is the life, when our, <clears throat> when our spirit is downtrodden, he will lift us up and make us whole. Now there's a whole lot more of this book than we're living. We know a whole lot of this book that we're not taking access to. So, uh, in, in Luke 6, now how many of you know the greatest sermon ever preached was Matthew 5, 6, and 7, when Jesus pre preached the Sermon on the Mount? Can I get an amen? amen? You still with me? All right, and when we get to Luke chapter 6, there's a different sermon there. It's a lot like the Sermon on the Mount, but it's called the Sermon on the Level Place. Did y'all know that? Verse 17, it says, And he came down with them and stood on a level place, with a crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people. So this is a different sermon, but I, I want to bring this up because he, he just shares some things here, some things that we know. He's really repeating the sermon he's already preached, but how many of y'all need to hear a sermon more than once? I need to hear them every day. 
So join with me in verse 27. Are you there? Luke chapter 6, verse 27. But I say to you who hear, are y'all listening? You ready to hear? Love your enemies. All right, let's take a show. How many of you have ever, ever heard that before? Raise your hand. Okay, we've got some people who've heard the word of God. How many of y'all still have problems with that? Raise your hand. I'll raise both of mine. Is that fair? Love your enemies. Okay, Lord, yeah. Can you let that go? Hurry up, Lord. Give me to something good. I don't want to hear that. I know that. Yes, Lord, love your enemies. And it's like the Holy Spirit says, well, why don't you do it? Love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Do good to those. Now, you may not have called them your enemy, but they think you're the enemy. And they're coming after you with guns a-blazing. What are you supposed to do? Everything in human nature says duck, hide, leave, fight back. But the spirit of truth, Jesus our Savior says, why don't you do something good for them? Bless those who curse you. How many of you, it's the normal thing that flows from you where somebody's cursing you, you just say, blessings be upon you. May all the, may all the treasures of heaven flow down and funnel only upon you. May you be fully saturated with all the goodness of God. I mean, I want to hit them. Amen? You curse me, I'll curse you back. Do unto others as they've done unto you. Is that what the Bible says? I don't think so. No, no. He says, pray for those who spitefully use you. Pray God bless them. To him who strikes you on the one cheek, offer the other. Oh, wow. Man, that hurt. Here, do it again. Now, some of you men are saying, uh huh. Uh huh. That's just not who I am. That's the problem. Is I'm not like Jesus. In any area of my life that is not conformed to the, into the image of Christ has a bullseye on it, and the Holy Spirit says, that's where I'm going to work. So the areas in my life that I'm as rough as a cob, the Holy Spirit says, wonderful, let's go and let's work there today. Well, let me go on a little further. He says, to him who strikes you on the one cheek, offer the other. From him who takes away, from your, clo takes away your cloak, do not withhold your tunic either. It's kind of like whoever takes your car, give them your house too. Give to everyone who asks of you. Now, I've already given everything I have to that guy, and they don't ever return it. Do I, you're telling me to, no, it's mine. They can't have it. Look what it says. Give to everyone who asks of you, and from him who takes away your goods, do not ask them back. Or grumble every time you walk by their garage and you see your stuff in their garage. And just as you want men to do to you, you also do to them likewise. Now, hold on. That's not my sermon. That's our need. And as I face the difficulties of life, and I don't have the strength to do that. I don't have the wisdom to know how to do that. So I say, Lord, help. If I begin my quiet time, and it's sweet, and I'm good, I've read a devotion, and it spoke to my heart. I've read the Word of God, and He's talking to me there, and He says, hey, Love your enemies. I'm going, oh, yeah. Yes, Lord. Your servant is listening. You got anything else you want to say, Lord? Thank you, oh God, for being a, a wonderful God. Thank you for forgiving me. And we pump ourselves up. Thank you for the love of God that flows in me. And then we walk out and we see that person. And we say, God, listen to me now. I can't do this. So you're going to have to do it in me. You're going to have to take that tongue and you're going to have to hold my tongue. 
because I'm going to say something wild. Anybody else ever mumbled in Jesus' name? You see somebody and all of a sudden you want to... <laughs> That's when you just say, Lord, help. And a peace that goes beyond all understanding. And a patience that is not you. And a kindness will begin to bubble up within you. We need the Holy Spirit of God. Because He takes the love of Christ that would send Him to the cross and He passes it on to us and He manifests it in our lives. So when I walk, I can be Christ-like. Because I'm being Spirit-led. All you men who say, well... That may be good for you, preacher, but that's not who I am. It's not the way I was raised. Listen to me. The most courageous, the greatest man that ever lived was knocked to his knees, who was hung on a cross, who they spat in his face, they pulled out his beard, and he kept his mouth shut. And when he did open his mouth, he said, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. He is the man's man. He's greater than all other men. And if you want to follow somebody, follow him. And ladies, you've got that heart that's ten times bigger than mine is. I'm kind of like the Grinch. You know, mine kind of shrinks down every now and again. But you ladies, you're so tender, and you're so loving, and you're so kind, and you're so generous. And then somebody will say something about you, and they'll snap at you, and it'll hit who you are, and you just feel so terrible. And you just need the arms of the Holy Spirit to come put his arms around you and say, you're beautiful, I don't care what they say. And he ministers love. And you need that. And you're desperate and bare like a dry desert, but yet you found the oasis that changes everything. You're not going to change the world, but Christ can change you in the world. If you're waiting for the world to tell you that you're beautiful, you're waiting for a long time. But I don't care what the world says. Christ says, I'll set you free from all of that. I'll crown you princess. You will reign with me. Do we need the Holy Spirit? Do we need Him? Verse 37. Judge not. I'm dealing with this in my own life, folks. Lynn and I are walking through some things, and we look at a circumstance, and by the way, as we look at this circumstance, 100% the way that the world looks at it, the truth is what the truth is, and we look at it, but then I look at the other person and I judge them because they're walking against it. Nowhere in here does it say that if you're right, you can be as rude as you want to be. No. He says, judge not, you shall not be judged. Condemn not. If any of y'all ever condemn someone, how dare they get themselves in that hole? They just do this to themselves. Forgive and you will be forgiven. I've already forgiven them 70 times. How many times do I have to forgive them? As many times as it takes. Give. Lord, how much do I have to give? You don't worry about that. You give and it will be given to you. Good measure. Press down, shaking together. Folks, you can't outgive God. How do we do this? When we wake up in the morning and we have our quiet time with God, we're looking to invite the Holy Spirit in. And he walks with me, and he talks with me, and he tells me I am his own. Holy Spirit, I'm going to give you free reign today. If you say yes, I'll say yes. If you say no, I'll say no. 
But let me tell you the manifestation of what God's beginning to do in my life. And by the way, don't for a skinny second think that I got this figured out. I'm learning this. I know for some of you it's very hard. You want your pastor to have it all things work together and be totally great in all these areas. And I'm telling you, it's, it's just not who I am. I'm struggling with some issues. And I'm having to walk through them. And I'm learning. Praise God. It's hard. But he's teaching me some things. And I'm walking through them with him. So at the end of every day, this is what I'm learning to do. At the end of every day, you need to be alone, solitude, and you need to be silent before him. That's very hard for me. My brain, I don't know how many RPMs it turns on, but it don't ever turn off. Matter of fact, how many, do any of y'all ever have problems at the end of your day turning your brain off? I mean, how much easier it would be if you just had a switch, you could just switch it off and just go to sleep, right? And, but how many of you relive your day? And how many of you relive the worst parts of your day? And, and all of those things flow and they come and you're right there. And, and I'm here to tell you, for us to hear God, we've got to quit listening to us. And we, you've got to learn to say to yourself in the kindest way you need to say it, hush. And you need, to, you need to be emptied of all those things. You need silence and solitude before God because before God you need to be able to say, Father, let me hear your voice. And I ask myself, at the end of every day, sometimes 10, 15, 20, 25 minutes, as long as it takes until you become silent before the Lord. You know, if you're around someone wise and they whisper, you want to hear it. So you want to draw close, amen? And you're going to be quiet so you can hear what they say. And I ask myself these two questions. Number one, Lord, what about my day today? Where did I see you today? Where did I hear you today? Where did I obey you today? Where were you working in my life? Now listen, you're going to have to say no to Brian. You're going to have to say no to you. I, I don't want to hear the, the volume of, of my filing cabinet where I start saying, oh, you did pretty good here, you did pretty good there, you said the right thing there, you prayed a good prayer. No, no, I want to hear from him. Because the things that I may value may not be the things that he values. But I want to hear all the things where he drew me to himself. I want to learn from those things. I want to hear those things and say, yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You know, that's a wonderful phrase right there. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for being there with me. Thank you for holding my tongue. Thank you, Lord. That's good times. And the peace starts to flow. But then you've got to ask yourself the second question. Lord, where did I hinder you today? Where did I quench your spirit? Where was I so full of pride that I couldn't hear you? Where was I so busy I heard but I procrastinated? Jesus, where did I act harshly or rudely? Where did I condemn? Where did I judge? Where was I not loving? And then you get this great, wonderful time to move from where you are to move where you need to be. You can repent. And you can say, thank you, Jesus. By the way, he sure does speak that part pretty quick. Now, the things that I want to repent of, but when he speaks, there's some things, look, 
Lynn's not here, and she won't watch this message. Um, a couple days ago, we were together, and we were talking about an issue, and, and I was sharing it, and she repeated back something different. And I said, no. I, I was trying to get her opinion on something, what, what she wanted me to do, really, was what it was. I said, so you want me to do this, and you want me to do this in front of her? And she, she went from the front yard literally to the backyard. I said, hold up. How did we get to the backyard? We were just sitting there talking about the front yard. You want me to do this? And, I, and she got to the backyard. Right, I said, hold up. What? Whoa. And I finally got her back to the front yard. And I'm sitting quiet before the Lord. And he's like, why did you have to do that? Because she was in the backyard, Lord. We were in the front. No. Why did you have to do that? <laughs> yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Um, you mean to tell you something wonderful? When you listen to the correction of the Lord, it is so cleansing. But let me tell you your level of, 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 of spiritual strength, your level of spiritual maturity is the length of time from when you hear God to the length of time that you obey. Some of y'all been dealing with some stuff for 25 years. Now, if I was a parent and I was talking to my child and, and I said, hey, could you do this? And I have to come back to them every day and say, no, no, no. Would you do this? Sooner or later, I'd just say, well, I'm just, okay. And then the child says, why don't you talk to me? Well, the last time I talked to you, I was playing for your good, for your betterment. I said something to you, and you didn't want to hear it. So we ignore the Holy Spirit. We try to put the Holy Spirit in a box. We'll pull him out when we want to use him. But until then, we'll just put him in a box and put him up on a shelf when he wants to flow like a river within us. And if your life has got just a little trickle check the source there may be a dam upstream that's blocking the source but if you get that blow up bl put a grenade in it blow up the dam and watch the river of life start to flow again and where the waters of life flow there's produce that will grow the old dry grass will begin to sprout green. The trees that are thirsting will begin to produce fruit. Aren't you glad God the Father's right where He needs to be? Aren't you grateful that Jesus is on the right hand of the Father? We have His undivided attention. He's listening to our prayers. He's saving souls. He's doing life work. Amen? But aren't you glad the Holy Spirit is right here? Close, a whisper away. What is it God may be saying? What is it God wants to do? I promise you, as I've walked through my day, there are times that I'll be ready to do something, and all of a sudden something says, Don't do that. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Something comes up, a different circumstance, and the worst of me wants to spring out. And I say, Lord, help. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You know that scripture we talked about this morning? You better remember it. You better think about it because it's about to come. You're going to need it right now. And when you need a sounding board, there is no sounding board. It's wonderful and it's glorious and it's powerful and it's patient and it's kind. And it's full of mercy and abundant and amazing grace is the Holy Spirit of God. If you want to seek to draw closer to God, open your eyes to the working of the Holy Spirit. Heads bowed. Eyes closed. If you're listening to the Holy Spirit right now, He may be saying to you, the one thing you need is to repent of your sins and get right 
The one thing you need is to trust me as your Lord and Savior. By the way, until you get that right, everything else is going to be wrong. So you need to repent of your sins, tell Jesus you believe in him. You know that he died on the cross of Calvary for you. You know that he is alive and well, and he's speaking to you through his Holy Spirit. He's drawing you into himself, and it's time for you to repent, let loose, and let God save you. Give your heart and life to Christ. You will never regret it throughout all of eternity. Mean it, and I promise you he'll mean it too. But for some of you, there's something God may be saying to you for quite some time. Listen. Obey. Don't quench him. Don't hinder the Holy Spirit. Please never tell the Holy Spirit to be quiet. Say, yes, Lord. Yes. Father, help us today. We need you so very much. We are all broken vessels, Lord, needing your repair. We're all sick, needing the hand of the great physician. We're all just stumbling through life, needing someone to take us by the hand and guide us home. Thank you, Holy Spirit, Holy God, for being that kind and gentle lover of our souls. Lord, we need you. Oh, we need you. Help us today. In Jesus' name I pray.